Okay, uh, in this particular lesson, we're going to be looking at factoring the form ax squared minus c, which is also called a difference of squares. Uh, in this particular case, you may notice that there is absolutely no bx term, or in other words, the x term is 0. There's no linear term. Uh, and that's a special case called the difference of squares. Uh, just again to review what factoring is. Uh, factoring is the opposite of simplifying. If we go from uh, factored form into the simple form, uh, that's called simplifying. And to go backwards from the simplified form to the factors, again, that process is called factoring. And in some cases can be quite difficult. Uh, as far as our first example goes, what we're going to be looking at is factoring x squared minus 9, and we're going to check it by simplifying. We'll look at three different methods of doing this. And again, what you may notice is that there is no x term. Okay, Kind of interesting. Uh, factoring x squared minus 9. What I have here is an x squared tile and minus 9. Uh, as we've seen previously, we would try to create an area in factoring, uh, but we don't have any x tiles to create the area uh, necessary for negative 9. In this case, they have to be opposites. Uh, what I'm going to do is borrow 0 from the tile bin, and you'll see that that area can be created quite easily. So if I add three positive x tiles, and three negative x tiles, you'll see pretty quickly that this area has been created. And our factors are x minus 3, and x plus 3. What you'll always see with difference of squares is that this term, the plus 3 and minus 3, are opposites uh, because they have to be cancelled out uh, in order to make the 0x term. You'll see that more clearly when we do the box area method. Uh, the box area method would say, again, we looked at this in the previous lesson as well, that this top left hand corner has to be x squared, this bottom right hand corner has to be minus 9, and the diagonal term, because there is no linear term, has to combine to be 0x. So in this particular case, we know that these two terms have to be x. And the only way to create a 0x diagonal term is to have opposite terms. So the opposites that create negative 9 are positive 3 and negative 3. And just to prove that to you, this here would be negative 3x. This here would be positive 3x. And that does make 0x. So all of these terms in the box area method are satisfied to make a factored form of x plus 3 and x minus 3. We'll check this in just a second, second to prove it to you. Uh, finally, the guess and check method uh, is very similar to the box area method and the other methods. We know that these both have to be x, and the only way to create with no x term is for these to be opposites. And I'll prove that to you in just a moment. So it'll be plus 3 and minus 3. And let me just check this by simplifying. So if we multiply x times x, we get x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. And then we get positive 3x and minus 9. And as you can see here, this creates 0x. So we have x squared minus 9. So by checking, we can see that the factors do simplify to x squared minus 9. So the factored form is x plus 3 and x minus 3. Uh, just trying one more with some fractions, which now factoring 4 ninths x squared minus 25 can be difficult with algebra tiles. So we're not going to use the algebra tile method. Uh, the box area method, again, would say that the top left-hand corner has to be 4 ninths x squared. Okay. So this here has to be 4 ninths x squared, which luckily is a perfect square. This bottom right-hand corner has to be minus 25. And these diagonals have to uh, add to be 0x, because there is no x there. Uh, so in this particular case, 4 ninths is actually the product of 2 thirds times 2 thirds. So both of these will be 2 thirds x to satisfy that. Uh, and 25, negative 25, can only be made up by plus 5 and minus 5, which will satisfy the minus 25 uh, situation. And in this particular case, these diagonals will make a total of negative 15 thirds x. Well, sorry, it should be negative 10 thirds x. Uh, negative 10 thirds x, positive 10 thirds x, which ends up 
being 0x. So in this particular case, again, our factors are 2 thirds x plus 5 and 2 thirds x minus 5. And I'll really quickly check that for you. Uh, so here's our factored form. That is going to be, if I check that, we have 4 ninths x squared minus 10 thirds x uh, plus 10 thirds x and minus 25. And these two cancel out to leave us with the simplified form, uh, which is in the question here of 4 ninth x squared minus 25. The guess and check method is identical, just without the box. We know that it is already 2 thirds x times 2 thirds x. And the only thing that will cause it to be a difference of squares is to add 5 and subtract 5. So that is our factored form. Uh, finally, just to show you one that has a greatest common factor, you always, always, always have to uh, factor out your greatest common factor if possible. In this particular case, 3 is the greatest common factor, and that will leave us with x squared minus 9. And as we've already seen, x squared minus 9 is a difference of squares, and it factors to be x minus 3 and x plus 3. Uh, so I'm not going to, again, go over that again. So this particular final factored form, so factor it completely, is 3. And this difference of squares here is x plus 3 and x minus 3. So our factored form completely is right there. So finally, the key ideas for this particular factoring method is factoring, again, can be done by creating an area with algebra tiles. Factoring the form of ax squared minus c, which means there's no bx term, is called a difference of squares. And poss possible methods include uh, algebra tiles, the box area method, and guess and check. And finally, you always have to factor the greatest common factor first, if that's possible.